Today I'll be talking about uh, neon transformer safety functions. Uh, I will do high voltage experiments here. You must be aware that if you reenact any of this at home, you're working on your own risk. Um, I'm a professional and I know what I'm doing exactly, so be careful, high voltage can kill you. I have uh, set up two same type transformers on this table, both operating two tubes. And the reason I show this is because when I bought the sign with this transformer, I noticed that on the auction photos it was lighting up although there was a broken tube and that is suspicious because the, the transformer has an open circuit detection who should shut off in such a case. So in current days the most neon installations require um, ground fault detection and or open circuit detection. In Europe, the main standard where this is written is the EN 5107-1. The current version is 2003 and in some countries it's free and some you have to pay. Uh, it's also available in some libraries. For the US it's the UL 48 and 2161 among others. In Europe also there will be further standards also relevant for neon signs. So the two basic safety functions these electronic transformers have is a ground fault detection. I'm going to demonstrate this to you with this ground wire that I have connected to the outlet. And if I put this ground fault, let's say, to this um, electrode connection over here, the transformer will shut off. And these need a moment to recover. The same on this end. Shut off. Now if I do the ground fault test on the suspicious transformer, you will see that it does not shut off when I put the ground to this lead coming out of it. It does well shut off when I put it to the other lead. So something's wrong on this side. Yeah. A thing that's, uh, that's normal and that can occur is when, um, well the high voltage is spans across all the tubing here and when the ground fault or the open circuit is about in the middle of the of the secondary circuit, then the transformer in some cases cannot detect it. That is normal. It's just a physical uh, border of how the, the detection works. But anyway, something's wrong with this transformer because this end did not detect the ground fault. And I'll show you that it also doesn't detect the open circuit. So I'm turning off the power and I'm loosening this connection here. Just bending this up a bit. Turn it on. That was the correct behavior. You see that it flashed, it detected the open circuit and shut off. So I'll, even when I connect the wires now, there is no light. Now let's change over to the suspicious output of the transformer. I'll open up this connection here. Turn the power on. And that's the problem. It should not light up in this uh, moment right now. You see when I make the connection here, it will draw an arc and go to full brightness, but it will not shut off. And this means that maybe on the on the outside winding of this of this side of the output transformer something is shorted, or some of the uh, detection electronics have just failed because this transformer is 20 years old, and I don't know how many hours it has been running. So this transformer needs to go. Now I don't do this test on every sign that I own, but I, I do test. Um, when I buy spare transformers, loose and uh, previously used transformers, I just uh, put them through this test open circuit and ground fault on, on both high voltage leads uh, to know if the transformer is still all right and uh, still okay to be put into service. Now we're looking at the older style and still in use um, core and coil or magnetic transformers. You can buy a ground fault and open circuit detection module for these that goes under the lid, but this one does not have anything, so I'm going to show you what happens. Um, first of all, when there is a ground fault, you will see a small arc. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. And we'll have a current flowing through ground from the high voltage, and that is something risky and not desired. And the other problem is when there is an open circuit, like a cable tears off or a tube breaks, then you can have an arc and now nothing's lighting up so for example in a bar the sign is on the wall i could assume that it's not powered up because it's not lighting up but still if i touched any of these positions i would get a shock because the high voltage is still there you see i can still make it to work so that's why you need to use the ground fold and open circuit detection uh, functions if necessary
I'll try just a simplified explanation of how these safety circuits work. Um, let's say we're looking at a classic uh, magnetic or core and coil transformer here that is connected to a primary voltage with a primary winding, it has an iron core that is grounded, and it has a secondary winding with many turns to generate the high voltage. And the center of the secondary winding, the center tap, is connected or referenced to ground. So now, um, if I have a tubing length of 8 kilovolt connected here, the transformer can power a total tubing length of 8 kilovolt, but at no point in the secondary circuit there will be more than 4 kilovolts towards ground. And that helps in construction, the insulation of the winding, the insulation of all the live uh, high voltage parts. It helps when humidity is present, uh, things like that. The lower the output voltage, the better. So now in a normal operation, this uh, transformer output will be loaded symmetrically and there will no current be flowing in this conductor here. No current in here. Now if we have a ground fault happening, let's say here we have a fault to ground, then suddenly uh, there will be an asymmetry on the output winding and there will be a current flowing through this conductor. I can show you the path of the fault current. Should have taken a red pen. So here's the ground connection and this is the way of the fault current. Here is the closed fault current circuit. So there will be a current flowing in this uh, center tap there where no current was before and that can be detected. So let's say by an electric component sometimes a, a zener diode is put here and then there can be a voltage tapped off this component put to a controller and the controller can then operate this relay that will shut off the primary. Um, if we have an open circuit on the outside. So let's say, forget about the ground fault, we now have an interruption here, the transformer is running uh, no load connected, then the input current will go down very low. Um, it will only supply the losses of the winding and some magnetic losses from the core. But this can also be detected if they put a, an electric component here, like a, a current measuring shunt or anything. And then again, the shunt can be connected to a controller and the controller can turn off the relay when it detects the input current dropped so low that it's expected that there is no load connected to the output anymore. These are just simplified explanations. There are more components necessary and this also is just one way. There are different possible circuits for a manufacturer to use to uh, realize these functions. On the electronic transformer it's just a bit different. So in a very simplified a schematic here again, the, the electronic transformer will have more than 50 components maybe and I only draw about five here. We have the AC coming in, rectified on a bridge rectifier, then a smoothed by a capacitor, switched by a semiconductor and onto the primary winding of the transformer. Again we have a transformer core and the secondary winding with a center tap powering the tube. Let's say we again have an 8kV. 4-E-4 kV 20 milliamps or something. So now if we have a open secondary condition then in this case let's say we have an interruption here that means the outside voltage output voltage will go up. Like if I only connect one tube to this transformer short tube it will maybe run on one kilovolt only with a bit more current um, close to the short circuit current. If I connect lots of tubing, like for the full 8 kB, it will run on a lower current, like maybe in Europe, the nameplate current. And if I interrupt now, so I have no load, then the output voltage will go up even higher above those 8 kV, and that can be detected electronically. For example, some transformers detected with an antenna that is glued to the case of the output winding. So they have a piece of copper glued here or something, and this antenna can be used to measure the electric field that goes up in uh, open secondary condition uh, put to a microcontroller and then the microcontroller can operate this power transistor to shut the transformer off. That's the one way to do the open secondary detection. The ground fault detection can work just in a similar way as on the classic core and coil transformer. Um, if we have a ground fault here and there is again a center tap on the output winding so that there is a symmetrical output. 
maybe because of the high frequency in this case it's, it's going to be coupled through a capacitor or other electric components but then whatever circuitry that is in the same manner uh, led back through, 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 through another control circuit and then used to turn off the primary if something uh, goes wrong here and some asymmetry on the output side on the output stage is detected and again as I said very basic simplified explanation and of course other ways to do it manufacturers will surely also have their little secrets of how they do it and will not all do it the exact same way and of course this one also needs some connection or reference to ground maybe through another capacitor or maybe this is a solid connection and then only the tap off is coupled through a capacitor I'm not so deep into the engineering of these transformers